A couple years ago, the internet was changed forever when Scott Cawthon, an indie game developer, released what was going to be his final game, Five Nights at Freddy's. Scott had been making games for a while with very little success and was going to give up on his dream of being a full-time game developer. He had decided that Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF as it's known now, was going to be his one last shot, his one last go at it, and if it failed, he was just going to give up altogether. Fortunately for Scott, he ended up making a game that was so impactful, so crazy good good, it ended up making entire YouTubers careers multiple times over, and he ended up creating a franchise so beloved and so iconic, it rivals My Little Pony and Sonic. Not kidding when I say that either. The amount of really specific, really detailed, weird fan art you can find of FNAF, in my head, it only truly rivals those two other properties, and I will not apologize for making that comparison. If I die, I guarantee you it was a brony behind it. The game was touted as the scariest horror game that has ever come out out, or at least had come out in a long time, with it redefining how games could scare you. In most other horror games, you would be in charge of your actions, running from place to place, hiding around with the fear that something was going to go wrong. But in FNAF, you were required to sit still and sit in the same place the entire game, with only the security cameras and the lights to keep you company. When the game came out, it pretty much destroyed, decimated YouTube and the YouTube recommended pages because everyone and their mother's butts were playing this game. My friends, who were adults at the time, who didn't watch much of YouTube at all, were watching playthroughs and downloading the game themselves. Everyone, and I mean everyone, was into it, including me. Seeing as right now, if you ask me to, I could probably recite Markiplier's FNAF playthroughs by heart. I've seen them that many times. By the way, when I said it made YouTubers careers, it specifically made Markiplier's. He was suddenly everywhere after that. FNAF is to Markiplier as Among Us is to Corpse Husband. Everyone became a obsessed with the game, to the point where, like with My Little Pony and other properties, the fandom started to grow beyond just the game. The fandom took on a life of its own, and suddenly, this indie horror game darling was becoming the jumping off point with smaller artists and musicians. People stopped just making playthrough content and reaction content to this game, and everyone became obsessed with the lore and with making content surrounding it and expanding the universe. Songs, theories, animation, fan works, everything regarding FNAF was taking off, and you only have to look at the views on Game Theory's videos to see just how profitable and how beneficial it was. But why was this game so incredible? Why were the fans so rabid? Was it because it was the most perfect game to ever come out in the history of the world? No, because despite it being in the horror category, a lot of the fans who were into this were actually children, which is the premier YouTube market. FNAF became this jumping off point for a lot of kids to learn to express themselves and to create for themselves, to explore their own creativity with art and original characters and stories and music. Kids, for some reason, saw themselves in this game and flocked to the content and creators who were producing it. Like I said, Game Theory and Markiplier, along with so many others, made so much money just talking about or playing the game through, and other creators were getting huge by making songs and animatics to it. Also, I didn't know where to include this, but I once hosted a birthday party at Michael's Craft Store, yes, I used to work there, in which me and the kids only talked about FNAF. They just wanted to talk about that. However, unfortunately, as is the case with most things, wherever there is a space filled with minors online, there are people who are looking to corrupt the space and take advantage of it. And that brings us to the person we're going to be talking about today, Mando Pony. And yes, his screen is Mando Pony, and I already made a reference to FNAF being akin to the brony fandom, and this man absolutely was a brony as well before he was in FNAF. So, we're just gonna keep moving forward, I just had to address that. If you are unaware of who Mando Pony is off of his name alone, you have probably definitely seen one of his videos in your recommended feed at some point in time without realizing it. Because like so many others, he made Five Nights at Freddy's content, specifically he made Five Nights at Freddy's music. And these videos did massive, massive numbers. Even if you haven't clicked on them, you've definitely seen the thumbnails. He wrote and performed songs like Survive the Night, which is his most viewed video at 34 million million views, Jess Gold with 29 million views, and The Show Must Go On, which, you know, 
third most viewed video only has 17 million. So, you know, normal, cool, lazy numbers. Mando Pony, whose real name is Andrew Stein, obviously found great success with making FNAF-related content, specifically music. And it was clear to see that he had found a fan base, but that fan base could only be described as young. His music, which is alright and sometimes catchy, really only appealed to the younger members of the FNAF fandom. But still, he found his own fan base and it started to grow. His channel quickly grew over 600,000 subscribers and he was thriving. So why, are you asking? asking, hasn't he posted in the last 10 months? Well that, my friend, is because he was exposed as being a predator, using members of his own fan base, his young, young, minor fan base, for sexual reasons, despite him being married for five years, and despite, again, I can't emphasize this enough, a good chunk of his fan base being underage. It should also be noted that he preyed and groomed adults as well, with multiple people coming forward about that, which is also an issue. Uh, while it's not the same as him with minors, I have have discussed before uneven and predatory power dynamics in these relationships, specifically with online creators, and this man was essentially using his own fan base as his own private porn hub. Today we are going to be going almost all of the evidence that has been made public right now, even though we can't go through all of it because there is a lot, and I'm going to be linking the thread where I got all of the evidence down below. Because one incredibly thoughtful person made an entire thread dedicated to sharing this information with the public. Seriously, go follow Twitter user Andy Exposes because they put in the time to make this comprehensive list, so they deserve to be sent some love. So where to start? One of the first examples is a text conversation that was shared between Andy's private Snapchat and a minor who he was talking to called Kay. In reading over these messages, Andy has clearly groomed this girl extensively, telling her that he loved her and messaging her things like, ah good, cause I wanna do you, fire emoji, ha ha ha, I woke up horny this morning, xd. And just so we know it is in fact him, he shares a photo of him Himself that was not previously shared online before these claims came forward and before the screenshot was leaked, adding legitimacy to these claims. Something that we should know is that most people don't say I love you until they know someone pretty well. So the fact that he's saying he loves her and she's saying it back, that tells you they've been communicating for a while and he's been pressuring her and talking to her like this for a while. He then messages Kay later, asking her to send some inappropriate photos that 100%, 100 trillion percent, are legal for him to have, and she responds saying that she will, quote, send some when she's in a more private space, which you can't fault her for saying or doing, seeing as he groomed her, and again, she's a minor. She literally does not know any better, and he's her idol, so of course she's going to react this way. And then he sends some more images of himself that he had just ready to go, because he had sent her images like this before, and also, as you can see in the screenshots, he says, I don't know if I sent these to you before, meaning he's probably sent these to other people before he sent to her, and these are just ready to go. That's gross. He continues to send photos and states that he's glad she doesn't mind him doing it, and she responds, because she's been groomed by him, by saying, you're not the type of guy that just sends unsolicited texts slash photos, and you also actually make sure I am comfortable, dot dot dot. And the message goes on, but the screenshot cuts off there, and it, it doesn't really matter what the rest of it says. But think about it this way. This 32-year-old man, this man whose entire fan base that is filled with kids, has groomed this minor to the point of her stating that him sending her explicit messages, even though she knows in the back of her head, he's telling her to keep it quiet, he's begging her not to say anything, this is inappropriate, she knows that, he knows that, they're both aware. She's validating this for him because she's been groomed so much by him that she's like, well, you made sure that I was comfortable. You made sure that me, a minor who can't consent, that you are aware of can't consent, you made sure I was comfortable first, therefore it's fine. Which, absolutely not. Again, I said this in my video about not safe for work Twitter, but as a minor, as someone under the legal age of consent, it does not matter if you go into these types of interactions, if you go into chat rooms, or if you're talking to an adult in a sexual way, thinking, well, this person is a person I'm interested in. Just because you want these kind of messages does not mean it's okay. It's not okay for the adult to misuse your naivete to send them because you were too young to understand the repercussions of this. I say that from experience. Andrew Stein
Klein is a predator through and through. He clearly talked to these girls, multiple of these girls, made them feel validated, special, loved, like they meant the world to him. He was sending them these long messages about how much he cared and how good friends they were and how much he was just so happy they kept these things private because if they didn't, oh, his mental health would be so in the gutter, which uh, I just, I, I can't even talk about right now. Also, he could get these photos. Also, he could get these videos. Also, he could call them and get off to them. Now, something else that I want to make very abundantly clear is that we know, at least in one instance, at least in this instance with Kay, that this man was very clearly aware of her age. She had released proof of her age at the time they were talking. But more than that, after they had plenty of conversations that are 100% not okay to have someone still in high school, he sent her this message, which let me just read for you. I've been meaning to say dot dot dot. Yeah, thank you for keeping all of this private. It's probably wrong of me to be attracted to you, but I can't help it. Just as long as it's kept quiet and as long as you're comfortable, is that okay? And it won't progress beyond just flirts slash lewd moments. Let's take that in for a moment. First off, he lied because he sent videos. He had her send videos. He called her, he tried to video chat multiple times. But this right here in these screenshots is full on admitted to knowing of her age, knowing he was abusing the power dynamic and still pursuing this blatantly sexual relationship. To be clear, I believe this is what the cops or laws, I don't know. This is called a smoking gun though. And the fact that this is something he said, that we can prove that he said, means that when the law gets a hold of this, which they already have, it's not going to be something he can actively argue against. This isn't going to be something he can move forward from. This guy really admitted to this being illegal and wanting to hide it and begging her not to say anything and begging, I know it's wrong, I know we shouldn't, but you're a minor and I'm attracted to you. Lock him up. It's over. It's done. The screenshots continue to show him sending her these messages, sending these loving, love bombing her, constantly continuing sending her images of him naked and telling her how he is just so lucky to have her on his side. And he states he's so glad to call her his friend. Big emphasis on friend there, I guess, before sending her a picture of him where his ass is visible in the mirror. Now, fun fact, this is just a weird thing to do. When you're friends with someone, I don't, this doesn't happen. I'm friends with plenty, plenty of people, and not one of them has purposely sent me a photo of their ass while telling me what they're going to do to me in a sexual way. Just as a hello, hi, friend. None of them, that's not a greeting. He also sent her this message. I am so flattered by those messages you left, sweetheart. I love you too. You're a bright and incredible person who deserves all the happiness in the world. And I'd also love to hold your face softly in both of my hands. But of course, that's friendship, right? He's trying to downplay what he's doing with a minor as just being like, this is just friend things, just casual friend things. I'm going to cup your face in my hand. I'm talking about wanting to do inappropriate things with you, but um, friendship. This is appropriate friendship between a 32 year old man with a wife and a minor. No, it's not. All of this is inappropriate. This man should be in jail. Don't worry though. He wasn't only doing this with one singular person. He wasn't only victimizing one person in his fan base. No, 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 no. He was doing this with an entire group of people, mostly, if not entirely on his private Snapchat, which he told each individual he made strictly to talk to them, which is clearly false, seeing as he did this to multiple people on multiple different occasions. The first person we talked about, again, was a girl named Kay, who spoke to him for a year and was underage the majority of the time. However, he was also speaking to another girl who was friends with Kay, who, when sharing the screenshots, summed up their relationship with this. Not gonna lie, him using the word friend to describe Kay disturbs me, because he also called me his friend, despite his relationship with both of us being very unconventional to say the least. I will frequently make note of my extreme discomfort at how intimate, sexually or not, he was with us when we started out as typical fans. In my case, he started pushing extremely personal info about him on me about six days after we started talking, and it all went downhill from there. We never had the ability to form a proper friendship, where he knew my interests or what I even looked like. He purely seemed interested in weaponizing me against Kay when he started to get paranoid she was going to expose him. And in Kay's case, their conversations seemed purely sexual and he only messaged her when he was horny. Now, like I mentioned, he was also married at the time and he would often use his wife as an excuse, as the reason that he was looking to have sex with his underage minor fans and would often confide in these underage fans about her, negging her, saying things like, while he loved her, she was so broken and she hated sex 
and she never wanted to touch him and he never felt reciprocated and he never felt loved because he loved her but she just wasn't doing enough and he would blame what he was doing on her. He said he hadn't been touched or cared for in any intimate way for over a year which is why he so desperately, desperately needed these underage minors to talk to him and send them photos and videos and to call him to have phone sex. He needed it because his wife was just so mean. Again, there are so many other people who have come forward to talk about their experiences with him, including one girl who, in her tweet talking about this, said she was 14 and homeless at the time they were talking, and he once again took advantage of that situation and sent nudes to her and requested them back. Not to mention the 15-year-old he was also allegedly grooming via Instagram, who he said was the perfect woman, all because guess what? She played video games. This entire thing is disgusting, and the fact that this man was able to grow his platform to the size that it is, to go into a fan base that was mostly minors, tells you just how disgusting and disturbing and predatory this man is. This man knew what the FNAF fan base was like. He knew what the My Little Pony fan base was like. I do not believe he was genuinely interested in these fan bases because he liked the material, seeing as when he first got fame, this is what he did with it. There was a comment that someone left on one of my videos talking about a similar situation that said people always assume a predator is going to be some guy who looks like a cartoon villain without realizing that predators are purposely disarming. They are nice. They are friendly. They are the guys who are fun to be around and seem trustworthy even though you're young, even though you're too young to hang out with them. Predators put themselves in these positions, put themselves around kids, put themselves in professions that make moms and dads and people trust them to make everyone trust them and that's why it's always so hard to believe when they are outed. I hope each and every one of the girls who were involved in this are okay and I especially hope his wife is doing fine. Despite all of this, I believe that they are still together and I feel like if she's still with him, if that's the case, she is most definitely being gaslit and manipulated to such a degree that she feels like she can't leave, that she feels so completely lost and helpless. I hope, at the very least, she finds it within herself to get out of this situation. But more than that, I want to thank each and every person who has come forward with this because none of it is okay. With that being said, what do you guys think of this situation? Did you ever watch Mando Pony? Were you a fan of his music? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, I checked the Andy Exposing Twitter. Apparently law enforcement has been involved, so hopefully we see something done soon. But with that, I am out of here. Later. <laughs>